Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode, solo sode, solo mini sode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast, Lessons Edition. Um, I'm your host, Kevin, of course, and I have kind of a fun slash funny one to share with you. Um, this one isn't so much a direct lesson from the conversations I've had with coaches. It's, it's actually a movie reference <laughs> that also gets referenced in one of my favorite podcasts, which is neither here nor there. But it does actually, in a, in a weird way, it came to me. It res. It came to me and resonated with everything that I've been learning and been exposed to in my conversation with coaches, um, and in working for and with coaches for the last few years now, um, and just thinking about how we go about doing the things that we do. Now I'll set it up a little bit. It's this movie called Boiler Room. It came out. I, honestly, it's it, it could be early two thousands, maybe late nineties. I honestly forget. It feels like maybe early two thousands. I can't remember. A while ago. I was I was a much less gray individual at this time. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a pretty decent movie about um sort of like stock trading. Um, anyway, I'll let you discover it on your own if you're not already familiar with it. I'm not necessarily recommending it. It's something that I've enjoyed. It's a movie that I remember fondly. Um, and in the like probably middle, like sort of the like towards the end of the first third, like towards the end of Act One, as things are kind of ramping up, um, in the movie. Ben Affleck shows up as a character who's an actor you may or may not be familiar with, or at least know that name, pretty famous actor. <laughs> um, ben Affleck shows up and he ends up having a small role throughout the rest of the movie, but he shows up at this meeting of a bunch of people who just got hired at this like broker brokerage stock trading firm. And they're all fresh faced new recruits, you know, clearly been promised, you know, looking they're they're money hungry. They're like, like kind of like the, the stereotypical image you might have. Um, and he comes in, he's basically there to like make this speech um, or this presentation. And he shows up and he's just wearing a nice suit or whatever. He doesn't turn up, the, he doesn't turn on a PowerPoint or anything. He just kind of walks in. And the first half of his speech is just about all the things they can expect to do, make, benefit from by working hard at this job, by, by having this job, the money they can make, the, the stuff they can buy, the prestige. And he's usually, he's pretty much doing it through the lens of all that he has. And he's bragging on himself. He's throwing his fancy car keys on the on the meeting table on the on the on the boardroom table just like look at my i forget what it's like some mercedes some fancy car he throws his keys he's talking about his huge house all of his toys and whatnot he's bragging on himself just setting it up he, he cuts a fine handsome figure real nice suit he definitely looks the part of the kind of successful person that all these young men want to be in the context of the movie so and right in the middle of his speech he pivots and he says okay actually how's that quote that i forget now you know what's possible let me tell you what's required. And it, it pivots the whole, the whole presentation on that. Now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. And then he goes about the kind of hours they're going to be expected to work, how hard they're going to have to work, how they're not going to make a whole lot of money at first. They're going to have to, pardon my French, eat a lot of shit, which again, this is in the context of the movie and in the context of stock trading. So, you know, understand that however you wish to. But basically, you're just going to have to have to grind it for a while. You're going to get there but you're going you're gonna to have to do what's required. And I, always, I really love that little pivot sentence in the middle of that speech. Now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. And I feel like that's a pretty good structure for what, a pretty good way to explain the structure of what a lot of coaching is about. A lot of, a lot of the coaches I speak to, there's, a, there's always a good evaluation period where they're discovering whether or not a, a client's going to be a good fit for them. Um, and well, actually every coach I've spoken to, there's a lot of integrity in coaching. I don't want to brag on everybody here who might be listening, but I really enjoy how coaches look for fit. And if it's not there, they're not just going to take a contract or take a job if they don't think they can help, if they don't think they can serve. In fact, they're going to know somebody or multiple somebodies who would be a better fit and they're going to recommend that person or that coaching firm. Love that. But that's that's a, that's a separate thing that I'll, I'll certainly brag on later. <laughs> and I brag on often. But the way a coach will come in and identify and also communicate what's possible. What are we going after here? This is what we, this, let's figure out what your intentions are, what you want out of this relationship, whether it's a you know a C-suite executive who's trying to you know be better in the boardroom or or you know, a, a, a mid-level team player who's looking to rise the corporate ladder or whatever it happens to be. There's so many different coaches that are listening to this podcast probably right now, coaching from different perspectives, from different departments, corporate, entrepreneurial, et cetera. Um, so you identify all that. You figure out what's possible what's present and what's possible. And then there's definitely a pivot. And this is something that I know a lot of coaches, they'll have this, they'll have this right up on front street where 
their requirement is that you, you have to you buy in. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. If you don't do the work, you're not going to get the results we just talked about. If you don't, and this is the coach speaking to their client, if you aren't prepared to do the work, come ready, come open, be vulnerable, then you're not going to get the results that we talked about you getting. You're not going to be able to get there. And I, did, I, I love how succinctly this random quote from a movie that I remember that also pops up in a favorite podcast of mine every now and again, really speaks directly to that and how, how good of a process that is. Let people know what's possible for them. It's like, you can, you can have these things. I'm not just blowing smoke. We're not just blowing smoke up people's butts. You can be this person that you want to be. You can have these things that you want to have. This is how. I'll even tell you how it's going to happen. And not just in some like, you know, read a book about it and figure out how it applies to your life. I'm going to tell you how you can do it. Not, not some general, you know, universal you. You, Kevin, you, John, you, Michael, you, you, Lily, you, Darcy, you, whoever. I'm going to tell you how you can do it. Now you know what's possible. Let's talk about what's required. I just, I love it. And I love the fact that that stays paired. And the moment those things drift apart, you lose, you lose track, you lose touch with what's required. Maybe you're not bringing, bringing the work you need, the vulnerability you need, the openness, the empathy. Maybe you're not bringing what's required. The results are going to drift too. And so I just, I loved that. It tickled me to no end that this random quote from a movie that I hadn't thought about in years, but has still kind of like been on the way, way, way back burner presence in my life for a while, kind of came up to me recently, um, just this week. And it just occurred to me how how good of a good of a way to explain what good coaching can look like. Now you know it's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Anyway, I'm done sharing. I'm done waxing on this quote. Um, if you want, you want, if you want to talk more about Boiler Room, I'm available. I haven't watched it in years, but it's a movie that I definitely loved in my 20s. I never really wanted to be that kind of that kind of person, but I don't know. I enjoyed the movie. It has Ben Affleck in it, Giovanni Ribisi, it's a few other people, Vin Diesel is in it. Anyway, this is not a movie review podcast, so. I'm going to leave it there and I will talk to you again very soon.